Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing out not one, but two Tamron lenses for Sony APS-C camera bodies. I have the Tamron 11-20 f2.8 and the Tamron 18-300 f3.5 to f6.3. And we're going to be testing out both these lenses out in the field on the a6600. And the first thing we're going to start off with is an autofocus test in both photo and video. On the a6600, I had the focus mode set to continuous with IAF on and a wide focus point. I found that the IAF on the 11-20 to was super snappy and pretty sticky. If the IAF disappeared, then the wide focus point would still be sticky on my face at both the widest and longest end of the lens. In video mode, it looks great as well. I love how sharp this footage is. I tried this lens out on the ZV E10 and autofocus is great on that camera body as well. Later in this video, I'll show you guys what vlogging looks like on this lens. Next we have the 18-300 to and I found this lens focuses just as fast as the 11-20. to You can see the focus point is yet again super sticky on Dan's eyes even while he's moving around. I also thought I'd leave this clip in to show you a behind the scenes look at the things we do when making an autofocus test. After our photo shoot, we'll take a look at this lens for wildlife photography and see how it focuses there for photo. I also wanted to share with you the crazy amount of range we're getting in this one lens. We are in the studio currently and the first lens I'm going to be using is the 18-300 to and the aim of today is I want to take some portraits at pretty much every single focal length that we have today so we can check out the image quality, the sharpness and all the detail at each focal length of this lens. So I'm going to start off right now at about 60 millimeters here. This lens felt so easy to use during our photo shoot. The IAF was always ready to go and just like our earlier autofocus test, it was sticky on Sonali's eye even in the studio which was a little darker than outdoors. I didn't make use of a focus point during this shoot, I literally let the camera and lens do all the focusing for me. And just to be clear, I wouldn't do this for a client shoot, but when I am testing out a lens for a review, I do like to let it do all the work so we can get an idea of its performance. So I'm gonna get some shots at 18 millimeters. Oh, that's so pretty. I find that zoom lenses usually struggle the most with full body portraits shot on the widest end and I did have a similar experience here. While I got some really nice sharp wide angle photos, I did notice that there were a few in the bunch that were slightly out of focus. For these, I'm gonna use like 70 millimeters just so we can get a more portrait close up. Something to keep in mind is the 18-300 to has a variable aperture of f3.5 to f6.3. So the more you zoom in, the more light you will need to avoid bringing your ISO too high and to be able to shoot sharp images. This lens is the full frame equivalent of 27 to 450 millimeters. I found this lens to be the sharpest from around 50 millimeters to 100 millimeters. There is a lot of details in these close-up shots of Sonali. I also really love how this lens renders. It looks so nice for portraits. And I will also be checking out the bokeh and what it looks like in natural light right after this photo shoot. Maybe uh, tilt your hands over a little bit more, yeah. Oh yeah, tilt your hands one way and then your head the other way. Something I really love about this lens is the fact that it is an ultra zoom in a small and lightweight lens coming in at 620 grams. From the quality of the photos I've taken with it, I think it's a really good value for money lens. You can use this lens as an all-in-one to take photos while you're traveling, of your pets, family, and then take it out to do some landscape photography. And then you can even do some wildlife photography as well as you have such an impressive full-frame equivalent of 450 millimeters. I think this is a great lens for an APS-C user who likes to shoot a little bit of everything. And we'll zoom in to 200 now. So let me get right back because this is very, very zoomed in. And then I'm also gonna zoom in to 300 and shoot from the same spot, which now is just a headshot. This 18 to 300 has Tamron's vibration compensation mechanism to help with motion blur, especially when you're shooting at long focal lengths. 
I found that it helped a lot. I have tack sharp images at the maximum 300 millimeters while using a shutter of one over 400. As usual, when we have a lens that has such a wide focal range, I wanna show you guys what it looks like when both the model and I are standing in one spot just to get a better idea of 18 to 300 and what that gives you in a lens. So I'm gonna start off at 300 millimeters and as you can see, it's a close up shot. And finally, 18 millimeters. <laughs> you can see just the whole room. So now we are on the 11 to 20 f 2.8, which is a super wide angle lens for this room. So we might see a little bit of the background, but we'll see what we can do with it. And again, I'm just gonna take photos at every single focal length so we can check out the image quality. Next, we are switching over to the 11 to 20 f 2.8, which is a fixed aperture zoom lens. This lens, in my opinion, is extremely sharp and I love the way it looks. Just like the 18 to 300, it was super easy to shoot with. The IAF worked flawlessly for me in the studio. Most of the photos I took are wide open at f 2.8, but I did also stop down to f 3.2 for a few shots. And do you want to hold the flowers a little lower? The reason I wanted to have both these lenses in a video together is that I think they make quite the good pair for a Sony APS-C user. I personally can see the 11 to 20 being used for video, vlogging, landscape photography, and low light situations. Then you add in the 18 to 300 that you can use for pretty much everything else, including portraits, spores, wildlife, etc. The 11 to 20 is also another lightweight lens at 335 grams. So with the two lenses together, you have a light kit, but with a huge range of focal lengths. And as a side note, I think the 11 to 20 can also be a good option if you like to use your crop Sony camera as a webcam. I usually use a 20 or 28 millimeter on full frame, so this lens would work great as well. It's a good focal length, focuses fast, quietly, and is great quality for video. And can we do some more where you were holding the flowers a little as well? Since these lenses overlap a little in focal length, I have a comparison of both lenses at around 18 millimeters each, so you can see the difference. I think the 11 to 20 is definitely sharper from the two, but I do also think they both look good. Hey everyone. Ooh, you get two of them in today's video. So we are back outside now and I am currently vlogging on the 11 to 20 f 2.8 on the a6600 because I think I need to show you guys what this looks like. This is such a cool lens to vlog on. This is what it looks like with my arm just outstretched, both arms, by the way. You can see it just completely in the frame. Uh, you can see me very clearly in the shot and you can see so much of the background as well. If you're noticing a little bit of vignetting here in the corners, it is just because of my ND filter, it's not because of the lens. I don't have the right ND filter for this wide angle lens. If I zoom it in a little bit, so we're currently at 11 millimeters. I'm gonna zoom it into 14. I feel like that looks pretty nice as well. We're back at 11 millimeters and I'm just walking to see how stable a walking shot looks like when I'm vlogging and talking and looking around at the landscape. <laughs> and then I also wanna zoom it into 14 millimeters so you guys can see what that looks like. And then we'll go to 16 millimeters. And then we have 18 millimeters and finally 20, which is a nice close up of my face. So that is the range of zooming that you can do with this lens. But yeah, we are currently at the park because I wanna do some bird photography on the 18 to 300. I think that is something we have to try out today with the a6600. So I need to borrow this camera body. So we'll be right back and I'll show you the bird shots that I get. I was able to get some really nice and sharp photos of the birds at 300 millimeters. The only thing I felt like was missing is a focus range limiter switch as the lens and camera really wanted to focus on the grass in the foreground instead of the birds a lot of the time that I was shooting. But you're not really going to find a focus range limiter switch on any budget friendly zoom lens or a telephoto lens with a wide angle end. I found that focusing on faraway subjects was a lot easier and more accurate with a focus point rather than the wide focus area. 
I noticed there was some purple and blue chromatic aberration in this bright overcast weather, but it is still pretty minimal that it would be easy to get rid of in Lightroom. I like what the bucket looks like in the picture as a whole, but when you zoom in, the bucket is a bit textured. I don't think that this is a deal breaker though, it is still bucket and it looks really nice throughout all of the focal lengths. I also tried out the 1-2 macro at 18mm and it looks so cool because this is a teeny tiny flower. <laughs> I really like how you have that extra feature from this lens. The bokeh from the 11-20 to looks cleaner than the super zoom lens and also if you wanted to see some of these photos for yourself, I'll have a sample gallery that you can download on my blog. I'll leave a link for that in the description. That is it for my review on these two Tamron lenses. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of these lenses and let me know what you thought of the review as well and if you end up downloading the sample gallery of images. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.